So we have just seen the biggest losing margin for the Australians in a Rugby World Cup. Now, it wasn't that long ago that I was saying that exact same statement for the All Blacks in their pre-World Cup game up against the Springboks. But in this game, something just didn't quite feel right with the way that the Australians were playing. They almost looked defeated at halftime. They went out in the second half. Every time they touched the ball, it was either a knock-on or giving away the penalty. Wales played a very strong game of rugby. They did what they needed to, getting themselves the three tries, walking away with the victory here, 40 points to six. But in this review, we're going to be looking through at a few of the statistics, looking at some key players for the Welsh, and then also where from here for the Australian rugby side. But we will start off with some of the stats. In the first half, Australia actually had more possession. They had more territory and they were also able to beat more defenders. In the end of this game, 299 for the Australians, 223 for Wales. They were able to catch up quite nicely as the match did progress. 19 defenders beat them for the Australians compared to the 12 of Wales as well. So in that department, you would think the score would not be sitting the way that it was, but the tackles that Wales were missing, in the end, they weren't substantial in terms of the overall result of this game. They were able to make 80% of their tackles, making 137. They were already at 103 at halftime. So it just shows the lack of attacking that the Australians were able to do throughout that second half. And the ball was all going to Wales. The Australians, they gave away 12 penalties compared to the eight that we did see from the Welsh. And like I mentioned, just any moment that it seemed like the Australians had half a slither of a hope of getting back into the game. It was either a penalty infringement or a drop ball that stopped that momentum. Looking at Wales' key players, like I mentioned, they played a good game of rugby. There were at times where they couldn't really do much more than they were doing because of those penalties that were given away by the Wallabies. They were taking on the three-pointers. Gareth Anscombe having a very decent day off the kicking tee. And that was after Dan Bigger was injured earlier on in the contest with some sort of pectoral injury. So hopefully nothing too serious there for him. And he will be back in time for either next game or the quarterfinals. And the reason I say those quarterfinals is now with that win, Wales have all but secured themselves their spot. They're about 99% likely to go through it unless there's a couple miracles that do happen for some of these lower sides. And will be the Welsh going head to head with more than likely the side who finishes second in pool D, which could be Samoa, Japan or Argentina. So a big game just around the corner for them. But also other players who stepped up, Gareth Davis, at number nine, he did absolutely brilliantly throughout this game, getting the ball out, also scoring the first try for the Welsh in this contest. And another player who did well was Talupe Falatel, bringing that physicality to the Wallabies. Did end up giving away a penalty within the first 15 seconds of this game, but not rolling out of the breakdown. That was the trend that continued, but Talupe Falatel, anytime he got in the breakdown, he was getting turnovers, causing problems for this Australian side. In the possession stats, it was 51% in favour of Wales compared to the 55% in the Territory Department. The big talking points for Australia, I still feel, are not so much about this game, but Australian rugby as a whole now. Sonny Bill Williams, he was actually on the commentary after the match talking about how can players follow a leader into battle, referring to Eddie Jones, when you already know he's got one foot out the door. He has allegedly been talking with Japan about their head coach role so the fact that he was already slightly leaving before this game, I feel like, to be honest, the players, they showed that on the field. It didn't look like a team that were willing to put in the hard yards. Didn't look like a side that wanted to be there. And that is the last thing that Australian rugby wants at the moment. They want a side that can be competitive, can be formidable. But this result was certainly far from it. So I'm intrigued to see how they go in their game up against Portugal next week. For Wales, they have got themselves a rest week and then a game up against the Georgians a week after that and they'll be feeling pretty confident three wins from three there is one side in every group so far that has been able to keep that undefeated record Wales and Paul C are exactly that team but do let me know what you think about this game in the comments down below by the end of it it was pretty hard to watch you think about the selections that Australia have gone with throughout this World Cup the Eddie Jones fiasco that they have now encountered it's going to be a very interesting next 12 months for Australian rugby indeed but thank you all very much for tuning in if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you all for the next one